All right, thank you. Uh, we'll have other members of the committee come up in a, in a bit. Tomorrow, Senator Durbin has decided to take up legislation that I think is fundamentally constitutionally flawed, should make every American afraid. And what am I talking about? <clears throat> Two things can be true at the same time. Liberal Democrats have been trying to destroy the Roberts Court for quite a while now because they don't like the outcome of certain decisions. And uh, their words, not mine. And now we have an, uh, high profile cases of justices taking a trip, taking trips. Two things can be true. The court probably needs to address that issue. I think they do. I believe they will. And Congress needs to stay out of the court's business. The Supreme Court was founded by the Constitution of the United States. It was created by the Constitution as a separate branch of government. All lower courts are statutory creatures. Uh, and one thing that we're going to do tomorrow as Republicans is stand up for the Constitution separation of powers when it comes to the operation of the Supreme Court. <clears throat> this is what Schumer started went over in front of the Supreme Court and basically threatened by name members of the Supreme Court. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. You have, un you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. This is the majority leader of the United States Senate going to the steps of the Supreme Court threatening their very existence. You ain't seen nothing yet. The hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. Maxine Waters, a senior member of the House. As we lecture Israel about their efforts to impose judicial reform, we'll leave it up to Israel to figure that out. Democrats are pounding on the Netanyahu government for destroying an independent judiciary. Here's what's happening in our own backyard. Democrats are openly, openly calling for increasing the number of justices from nine to 13 to dilute the Supreme Court majority that all of us have worked for for 20 something years. That's destroying the independence of the judiciary. There's not a worse idea on the planet than have politicians change the number of Supreme Court justices when they don't like decisions. That's the end of the judiciary as we know it, and they're openly talking about doing that. The New Republic, I don't get it, I don't read it, but other people do. The Democrats need to destroy Clarence Thomas's reputation. What's gonna happen tomorrow is fulfilling these ideas. Again, the Supreme Court needs to get their house in the order, and I hope they will. But tomorrow, they're going to try to create a law, Senator Durbin and his colleagues, that would, through congressional statute, determine the issue of recusal of a Supreme Court justice. They're gonna create a complaint commission that would allow complaints against the court to be adjudicated by lower court members, judges. In other words, they're gonna allow lower court judges to tell the Supreme Court how to operate when it comes to a complaint against the court. That's a complete assault on the court as we know it. So tomorrow will be one hell of a fight. This needs to end. The effort by the left to destroy the court in the eyes of the public is one of the most dangerous things I've seen since I've been here. So the committee, of which I am the ranking member, has shown a willingness to work with Senator Durbin and others. We passed legislation uh, protecting children from online sexual predators and on and on, 27 to nothing. I voted for judges, people behind me have voted for judges. We're gonna draw a line in the sand. Tomorrow, Republicans are gonna come to this committee 
and we're going to protect the constitutional separation of powers when it comes to the Supreme Court. We're going to fight back this effort. We're going to offer amendments and to the American people. You need to pay attention to what's going on up here. If this bill ever passed, the Supreme Court would be destroyed as we know it. Senator Grassley. Well, Democrats and their dark money, their allies connected with that dark money, have engaged and are engaging in this campaign to threaten or pack and this effort to smear the courts. It's not about oversight or accountability. It's about outcomes that they don't like. Senator Sh Schumer said as much a couple years ago on the steps of the Supreme Court when he was threatening Kavanaugh and Gorsuch. The left didn't bat an eye when liberal justices updated disclosures. They didn't raise concerns during the court's liberal majority. But when rulings they don't like, they cry corruption. But when this is not a good faith effort to improve judicial accountability, the Democrat proposal is an affront to the separation of powers and an affront and also an effort to inject politics into the judicial branch, the apolitical branch. It dictates rules for the court beyond what the Constitution allows. The judiciary is policing itself with these self-imposed ethics principles that were put out March the 7th. The court's recent actions to clarify disclosures requirements demonstrate its commitment to credibility and public trust. We should let these new rules play out before any other action is suggested. Senator Cruz. Years ago, Justice Antonin Scalia testified before Congress, and he asked and answered the following question, what is it that keeps us free in America? What is it that protects our rights? And he pointed out that many people might answer something like the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment. And Justice Scalia laughed at that. He said that answer is objectively incorrect. He said if you look across the globe, there are tyrannies all over planet Earth that have wonderful Bill of Rights written. He pointed out the Soviet Union's Bill of Rights protected the rights in many ways more robustly than does our own Bill of Rights. And yet, of course, in the Soviet Union, if you cross the government, they'd throw you in the gulag and torture you and murder you. What Justice Scalia went on to explain is what protects our rights here is the rule of law and the structural design of our Constitution that separates power, that prevents power from being unified in one place in government. And any time power is unified, the people's liberty is destroyed. And that has been true throughout the history of mankind. What we are witnessing right now from Senate Democrats is an organized, concerted, deliberate effort to smear, to try to delegitimize, and to try to destroy the Supreme Court. We're witnessing it because they're angry. Senate Democrats are angry that we have a majority on the court that are willing to follow the Constitution and follow the law. And it's important to note that Democrats don't like democracy. If they did, they wouldn't go to the courts and try to force through wildly unpopular left-wing policies that the voters don't want. But today's congressional Democrats are more than willing to trample over the will of the voters, and they want judges to rubber stamp their left-wing views. As a result, the Democrats look at the Supreme Court as the one institution of government that they cannot force a left-wing agenda down. Today's Democrats want to strip Americans of religious liberty. Today's Democrats want to strip Americans of free speech. Today's Democrats want to strip Americans 
of the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. In fact, some have gone so far as to say they wish the Second Amendment had never been written. Standing in their way are justices who took an oath to the Constitution and who are faithful. So what we're seeing is a concerted effort. As everyone here knows, Chuck Schumer stood on the Senate floor and said that they had released the whirlwind, the justices, and he named Kavanaugh and Gorsuch by name, and they would pay the price if the justices did not rule the way Democrats wanted them to. When a draft of the Dobbs decision was leaked last year, a left-wing writer at Vox, a fellow named Ian Milheiser, tweeted, quote, Seriously, shout out to whoever the hero was within the Supreme Court who said, F it. And by the way, he didn't abbreviate it. Let's burn this place down. That's what their angry base is calling for. And tragically, that anger inspired a lunatic to travel from California to Washington, D.C. with guns and knives and rope with a deranged plan to murder Justice Kavanaugh. We've seen angry left-wing protesters protesting at the home of Supreme Court justices, and Joe Biden's attorney general refuses to prosecute them for the federal felonies they're committing each night. This discussion of ethics, so-called ethics, is a fraud. They have targeted Justice Thomas because they have decided they want to destroy Justice Thomas. They hate Justice Thomas, not because his conduct is different from the other eight justices, but because A, he has voted faithful to the Constitution, and B, he is a black man who dares to be a conservative. And for the modern left, that is the gravest sin of all. The standards they're talking about are applied utterly hypocritically. The conduct they're attacking Justice Thomas for doing Justice Stephen Breyer did the same thing. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg did the same thing. Justice Sonia Sotomayor have done the same thing. But they don't attack them because this is about politics. And I want to emphasize what Senator Graham just said a minute ago. If we sit by and allow the Democrats to delegitimize the Supreme Court, to tear down the rule of law, just as Justice Scalia told us years ago, nothing will do more to endanger the liberty of every American. This will not stand. One of the reasons that I am proud to be a senator is because all of us know it's not something we speak about often. But all of us know, Democrats and Republicans, that there are lines we should not cross. We may huff and we may puff and we may argue passionately, but we know there are lines that you do not cross. And maybe I'm naive. I want to believe that if my Democratic colleagues really thought they could pass this bill, they wouldn't do it. Because this bill represents a line you don't cross. It will destroy the United States Supreme Court as, a, as an institution. Uh, point two, let me reiterate what I just said. This bill is dead as fried chicken. It's going to get out of committee. It doesn't have 60 votes in the Senate. And it sure can't pass the House. So why do it? Why do it? Why beat the living crap out of the United States Supreme Court? I, 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 I just don't get it. I understand politics, but I just don't get it. Um, my Democratic colleagues 
tried to expand the Supreme Court. They tried to pack it. They never had the votes. I still want to believe that if they had had the votes, they wouldn't have done it. Maybe I'm naive. Now, there's another way to diminish the value of the, uh, the, uh, the integrity of the United States Supreme Court, and that's shrink it. Imagine, just, I mean, one of the provisions in this bill is so outrageous. I mean, imagine, you want to shut, a, shut the Senate down, allow anybody who wants to to file a complaint against a senator if the complainant thinks that senator has a conflict of interest and require that, that the complaint be resolved before you vote. That's what this bill does to the United States Supreme Court. Isn't that special? How many complaints do you think they're going to be? Every single day. And the whole point, if they can't expand the court, they'll shrink it. This bill, it, it, it just, I, I mean, I, I, I'm really disappointed in, in some of my colleagues for even bringing this thing. And for every one of you who writes what Kennedy says, he'll buy you fried chicken. Right. <laughs> It'll be dead. <laughs> I, I don't have much more to add to what my colleagues have said, but I do think you're going to see political theater on display tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a, um, it's a waste of time in the judiciary. It's particularly insulting to those of us like Senator Graham uh, myself and others who've worked on a bipartisan basis on nominations, on bills of substance, but uh, John Kennedy's right. This bill is dead on arrival. It's dead before it even gets to the Senate chamber. It's even deader when it gets over to the House. Neither of those two. Uh, we're not going to see a vote in the Senate. We're not going to see a vote in the House. The one thing that I will say is that the Supreme Court, and I, I believe Lindsay mentioned this before I got in, that, that there is a percept, what, what's happened as a result of all of the, uh, the acts of Chuck Schumer on the Supreme Court steps, all the shots that have been taken by some of my friends on the other side of the aisle, uh, is that there is uh, a certain uh, confidence, uh, a lack of confidence among the American people. Um, and so I do think that the Supreme Court would be well served to address this and govern themselves. But I do not believe it's within the Senate's uh, power or constitutional authority or otherwise that we should even be considering this bill tomorrow. When I was in the House, every once in a while, somebody would get a bee in their bonnet about an issue and they would go file a messaging bill so that they could get out there and talk about an issue and push the conversation with the hopes of someday trying to make that happen. And that is what the Democrats are doing here. They have been on an absolute tear to delegitimize the Supreme Court. My colleagues have talked about that. And they don't want to talk about the comments of Schumer on the Supreme Court steps. They don't want to talk about him going to the floor and calling constitutional justices conservative justices and calling them liars. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about what has happened outside the justices' homes post the Dobbs leak. They don't want to talk about the assassination attempt on Justice Kavanaugh. They don't want to talk about Senator Schumer over on the Supreme Court steps saying you will pay the price. Well, see, this is their price. They are going to take this bill to Senate Judiciary Committee and they're going to say, we have to reign in the court. We have to reshape the court. So tomorrow, as an amendment to this bill, I'm going to offer my Protecting Our Supreme Court Justices Act. It would modify Section 1507 so that it increases the penalties on people that are trying to intimidate or threaten or assault or influence our justices and the decisions that they make. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? We have another vote pending in a minute.
Any questions? Yes, sir. So we've talked about this. Obviously, you do think there are some issues that need to be resolved in there. Do you think what Justice Roberts has done so far is insufficient? Yeah, I really don't know. I mean, um, you know, the allegation about Sotomayor or staff saying you hadn't bought enough books for her to come. She's a wonderful lady. I'm, that, that, that doesn't, the court needs to sort of up its game. We'll see how that unfolds. Um, as Senator Cruz said, this is an effort to destroy the court. This never happened when you had liberal justices cranking out opinions that people liked on the left. They travel just as much. So we see this as a, a chance for us in the Republican side of the aisle to stand up for the court as an institution and call out pretty outrageous behavior. Because Senator Kennedy's right. This is a line nobody want, should want to cross. The bill's going nowhere. And I told Senator Durbin, I'm trying to work with you the best I can. We've done a lot of good things. But th this is going to affect the operation of the committee down the road. This makes it less likely for the committee to function because one part of the committee is trying to destroy the court in a way that's constitutionally laughable and scary. Thank you. Yes, sir. What would you like to see Roberts do to address some of the issues? That I think the whole point of this conversation is to let him make that decision. Thank, Thank you, guys. You.